Welcome to the NBA Show, episode 96. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Rarity. Rarity, rarity, rarity. Rarity, rarity, rarity. Rarity. Well, um, I think you might have an overdose of rarity today. Rarity. Indeed. So, how was the week, man? <laughs> uh, my week has been pretty hectic, going all over the place, left and right, but finally things are settled down. And, uh, yeah, and I finished a, a, a big project as well. Uh, wow. I mean, 2014 starts really hard, really strong already. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you saw it, but Equestria Daily premiered the comic that me and my friend write at Our Pony Star were working on. Oh, yeah. uh, and it, it's... It's doing amazingly well, and we are planning to do the rest of it uh, uh, come next month. So, yeah, we're, and we're also working on a, on a Flutterbat project. It's going to be like Dracula, but with Fluttershy. It's going to be fun. Ooh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. So overall, is, I'm doing good. Oh, awesome. Also joining us today is Kitsune Risu. There's so many things that I want to say about James's uh, <laughs> introduction, right? There. Like... I, go ahead, go ahead, say them, man. <laughs> it's fine. I I think all the things that I want to say have already sort of been, you know, said in the air of what's going on. Nothing I could put into words would, you know, do it justice. Uh, except that you're crazy, all right? <laughs> you're crazy and get out <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Like, oh, my God. What? It's like, it's like, you freaking turn into a Pokemon. <laughs> anyway, Kitsune, how was your week? You guys been alright, I guess. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually saw, um, a blog about, uh, your comic. Ooh. In, oh. uh, Filmfic, actually. Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah, of course, because, uh, Rated yeah. is a fin fiction author. And yeah, 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 he started yeah, yeah. there actually. We've uh, yeah, we've so, actually yeah, crossed paths once. Oh, so I actually read about that thing, and it's pretty interesting, I must say. It's uh, good stuff. So, you know, way to go getting featured on uh, EQD. That's great stuff. Thank you. Um, I, I, actually, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to sound pretentious, but I'm kind of like starting to get freaked uh, uh, out by a bit too too late. For that. <laughs> but no, it's like it's like I got I got freaked out because. I completely forgot about uh, that we posted the comic on Equestria Daily. And a couple of days later, Cal Payne, the guy who runs the art submissions on the website, he comes to me and says, hey, congratulations on getting 11,000 visits on the first page of the comic. What? And I start freaking out. I'm nice. saying, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think it's over 12,000 12, views now. And I'm, I'm still can, I still cannot believe it. Getting on Equestria Daily is such an intimidating thing. That I cannot believe I, we, we managed to get there. Yeah, okay. Anytime I appear on a draw friend, I, I, I am like, I don't deserve this. <laughs> I, I oh, so but, but you did You did good, man. You did good. That's good stuff. Thank you. You doing okay over there, man? Yeah, I'm doing fine. In fact, I got a pretty good thing uh, going on just a couple weeks ago, actually, uh, as well. I, I posted a new story um, mid-December. Uh... And and it did actually a lot better than I thought it was going to do, and it's it's sitting it's sitting at like a, a crazy ratio of uh, of votes because in in filmfic everything's about the thumbs you know mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. stick your thumbs everywhere, <laughs> and um, for the stuff that I write, which is uh, you know a little bit more difficult than you know your regular like you know ex wife kind of fake. Um, it, it did amazingly well, and I was actually very happy. And it, it dominated it, it dominated the uh, feature box for for quite a while. You know, beating uh, you know a lot of uh, first person, you know, second second person sex fix and you know human. Oh God! And everything. I remember I remember those on the days where we had Derpy Buru instead. No, no Pony Buru uh, instead of Derpy Buru. Yeah, they just they just moved over to Finfic in, in story form. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, I don't know. So I guess we both we both got something pretty good out of Christmas, huh? Oh uh, yeah, my Christmas went great. Indeed. Anyway, also joining us is a newcomer to the show, Final Gamer. Hello, man. Hello, Final Gamer. So here's the thing: we all know you from James's stream. You've been there a few times, 
But mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? I'm from Scotland, and I, I'm essentially James's best friend. And yes, he is. I'm, I'm, you can also blame me for being the one that introduced him to My Little Pony. Like yes, you totally three years can. Ago? Three yeah, years ago, uh, was it? Yeah, it was literally three years ago around this time you were trying to cheer me up because I was uh, depressed after losing my job. So oh, yeah. you were like, why don't we watch My Little Pony? And, you, and, we're, and I was like, okay. And then my, <laughs> li- my life changed. <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah. I'm, I, I, I am the one who created this monster. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. I, got a, I got a question. I got a question. Are you also the one responsible for all this rarity? Hey. No, that was all his own design. That was all his, okay, I still like you. I still like you. Right. <laughs> no, because, uh, you know, uh, when I first saw the show, like, starting out, because it, I was like everyone else, you know, there's a friend who introduces you to it, and then you introduce it to a friend. I had a friend from Oklahoma who has a generally good taste of cartoons. So when he told me about a new My Little Pony, I was like, I'll give it I'll give it a shot. And around the time Fluttershy pops in, I'm like, okay, this is really good. <laughs> well it's not no, it was when Fluttershy pops in, I was like, Oh my god, you're adorable. I can't handle this. And then Giggle the Ghosties came in and I was like, okay, this is really, really good. This is really impressive. I'm gonna watch the next three episodes and then, you know, come to come the two days later, I'm on bridal gossip, and I'm like, "What have I done?" <laughs> what, what's that, what's did, going it, on? Actually take, did it actually take you that long to get to that well, point? Was, where you... Well, it was um, because it's, by the time I was getting into the show, it was bridal gossip was uh, showing. So I just sort of went through day after day of the episode with my friend and. Yeah, it just sort of ended up that way, and then I showed it to you. So I have yeah. actually been, uh, you have been a brony for longer than I am, because that was like in 2010, and I started watching when the newest episode released was Sonic Rainbow. Was it? Oh, yeah. It was, maybe it was a lot later than that, but yeah, I think I was maybe half a month more, but not by that much. Well, so you're responsible for James then. I couldn't think of that. <laughs> he made and, me. And he the, created and, me. Father. No. Boys. But anyway, anyway, uh, moving on. Before we start, um, Kisu, favorite pony, favorite episode? I can't, I can't remember what I said the first time, and now I'm just trying to figure out what episode no, no, I Never mind. Like. That, that doesn't really care. New I, think, I think I actually said Sister Who Social. I think I did, because I do still like that episode a lot. Um, even throughout uh, Season 3, because I think when I came on the last time, Season 3 was in... Was it, was it done? I don't think it was, right? Season 3 was done. Season 3 was done. When you were, when you were Season 3 was done. Oh, I can't remember, but I'm, I'm actually just looking through all the episodes right now, and I still think Sister Who Social was the best, because you get to see Rarity all up in that mud. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you like that, don't you, pervert? <laughs> I do, I do kind of like that a little bit, yeah. You know, like, uh, oh, boy. Uh, no, it, 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 was a sweet, it was a sweet episode, and I like episodes which um, impress on family a lot. And that one had a very strong, uh, uh, you know, filial message to it. So I'm going to go for uh, Sister Who Social again uh, until I actually get around to watching season four. And maybe there'll be something there because people have been talking a lot about uh, bats lately. And I'm not <laughs> sure what the hell that's about, but it's been cropping up a lot. And don't spoil me, but um, yeah, something about bats and Fluttershy. So, you know, that sounds cute. Yeah, I might... you, you should go watch, man. But anyway, favorite pony? Rarity. No. <laughs> twist. No. The uh, lies been revealed. Twist is, twist is the best pony. Okay, and like all you can, all you haters can just get out the front door. <laughs> okay. Not then. from me. I actually really like Twist. This is pretty oh. adorable. That's ador- nice. Yeah. <laughs> her lift is so adorable. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> dislikable about her. It really isn't. True. True. Uh, you'd be used to be surprised how many people hate hate on Twist. Just because she talks a little bit different, you know, there's no tolerance. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah. And uh, for for anyone who has a lisp and is listening, I'm not making fun of you. I'm supporting your cause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, final gamer. What about you? Favorite pony? Favorite episode? 
favorite pony we can for say uh, let's see for a favorite pony uh, of all has to be Apple Bloom honestly okay. and I just like I like what she uh, rep- I like what she represents and what she is she's a young girl with the world open to her and she can do anything she wants and you know she's resourceful and quite uh, intelligent in some ways I just I like her she's a little more balanced than most usual little girl characters are. Um, balancing the sort of feistiness of Scootaloo and the uh, sweetness of Sweetie Belle, and sort of being in the middle. Okay, I can understand. As for favorite episode, Family Appreciation Day. Oh, why? Why is that one? Because uh, it's rarely said. No, like it's a uh, no, it's a uh, it's a uh, family appreciation day, not a uh, sisterhood social. That is the episode where <laughs> Granny Smith uh, goes to the school. Uh, yes, I said rarely yeah, said, said, not rarely. Oh, ra- she said rarely said, not rarely something. <laughs> ah, okay. Anyways, James, James, James so, just sorry. get her out of your head. Okay, so yes. like, no, no, never. Rarely. Oh, she's she said my rarely. wife who. <laughs> No, no, every fucking I, word that I, starts with R is rarity. Okay. Yes, every word starting with R is rarity. What's the what's so bad about it? Anyways, so I love Family Appreciation Day because, well, firstly, it is an Apple Bloom centric episode, and secondly, I really love the family thing about the Apple family, and I like seeing more of it. Because it's it's a very it's a very sweet and homely thing. It's the only family you really see actually doing things together in the show. And Granny Smith has this. I love this adorableness of Granny Smith being at first looking rather senile, but actually doing things with a purpose. And the it's I'm mean, I'm really big on family, and I have a grandmother, and I love her very much. So I really sympathize at the end where Apple Bloom stands up and defends her because. That's a that's a really it's it's the only moment in the entire series that's actually made me a little bit weepy, and I'm very difficult to upset. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for answering those questions, and now we do, now we've done all the way. We can start the show. Anyway, in our first topic, it's news time, and today's news time. Megan McCartney says Twilight will do princessy stuff in this season. Recently, a question was asked to Megan McCartney. The question was. Will Twilight's role as a princess be important to the plot of any episode in Season 4 before the finale? And her answer was sweet and simple. Yes. What will Twilight do? What will her role be? Well, guess we'll have to wait and see. Links can be found in the show notes. But anyway, I think that we have to wait and see what Twilight's going to do in the future because her role is going to be big. Is this a bad thing, though? I actually have a serious question for what. <laughs> but um, is this is this a bad thing? Because thinking about it, right, is the suggestion in this that they are actually going to push Twilight to a different role? You know, at the start of the season, remember, before season four came out, mm-hmm. everyone was promising nothing's going to change, nothing's going to change. Right now, they're actually saying, yeah... yeah. A little bit of change. The situation right now is with this and with the question at hand is, will Twilight status as a princess, will she do princessy stuff? And Megan McCartney's answer is yes. And right now in season four, Twilight has not done any princessy stuff. And her personality has not changed from season one to three. Yeah, which is what people wanted, right? People yes. were all upset that, you know, she's going to be a princess now the my whole life is ruined. No, kids, kids, no. kids. The thing is, right now, they have kept that promise. No people want her to have a responsibility. She is a princess, and princess comes with responsibility. Yes, people are full of That's not a word. Man, they don't know what they want. Everyone was so butthurt when she became a princess. They're like, oh, they're ruining the show. We don't want to change. We'll keep her the same. And then now that she's exactly the same, everyone's like, so is she actually going to do something? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? what no, then, okay, pick. Pick a side, like, you know, why Why I'm upset, right, is basically because I was never part of the bandwagon of the people who were just enraged about uh, the fact she was pissed. Because everybody knew one guy, right? Everyone mm-hmm. knew one guy who was really pissed off that they decided to make uh, Twilight a princess. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they was like, oh, they're going to ruin this, uh, everything. And, you know, you know what, everything's pretty much okay, right? Yeah, they say yeah. 
Well, it's not the same. It's different, but it's still okay. Yeah, nothing. I mean, nothing can remain. In fact, I, yeah, I don't like I am with... to remain the same all the time because if everything remains the same, they're basically stuck in this uh, static Simpsons kind of world. You know, mm-hmm. evolution is. I agree is, with uh, Kitsune. It's, it's a good mm. thing. I agree with Kits. I agree with you, Kitsu, in that change is a good thing, and change is it's it's really important to move forward. Not only the story, but the characters and the universe that surrounds them. Now. Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful when doing change. You have to be very subtle. And so far, season four has been doing that. They have been very, very subtly changing the characters. They have been adding new things and new stuff to them. The thing that people complain, and I absolutely agree with them, is that they have yet to do something big with Twilight Sparkle. If you notice, after the season, the season four premiere, they haven't done much with her, if not anything. Uh, like, like the most important thing she has done is discover Celestia's and Luna's old uh, journal. She hasn't done anything else. Mm-hmm. Like uh, she hasn't discovered anything new. She hasn't. Uh, uh, as, well, yeah. I mean, she she didn't have that much of an impact. In fact, in uh, in the power in the power ponies episode, the superhero episode, she was the last one to get a grip of whoa, whoa, her whoa, power. Whoa, 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 spoilers! Spoilers! But I'm not spoiling you much with that. You're going to see that as you're going to watch the as you watch the episode. In that, <laughs> they are not doing much with Twilight in this moment. They're not doing much with her at all. I'm sure they're going to do much with her later on in the season. But right now, I have to side with the people who complain that they're not doing anything with Twilight Sparkle. It's like it, it's a bit wasted. It, I, I it feels like, wasted. Like I'm pretty sure they're just building it up for something big yeah. towards the end finale. True, true. Uh, I, I want a gradual shift. I, I'm always for a gradual shift. In fact, one of the words that you said was key to the idea of change. Uh, change, uh, moving forward. Right? I think you said forward. <clears throat> and yeah, there are ways to that, change right. things that actually move things backward a little bit and that's happened one or once or twice uh, during the season and i i like this idea of a gradual shift because yeah. one thing i hated about um i think it was yeah well basically season three in general right was that you had that one little tiny uh drop of you know the book at the end of crystal empire part two and they were like, oh, there's this mysterious book there. And I was like waiting the entire season, just like see, looking for hints of that book to come back. Uh, yeah. like, is <clears> that <throat> so, is there, are they going to address that? Are they, what? And I'm then, still waiting on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, they and, still, they, no, yeah, hey, no, the book appeared in, at the end of the series. A, yeah, Magical Mystery Cure. And that's the oh, yes. only time right. it came back uh, for uh, like two seconds <clears> and... <throat> It was for a drastic change, right? And, hey, it's all about um, subtlety. Look, if you if you think of no, wait, it's about subtlety. Season three was very based on subtlety. Every time you see Twilight on an episode and she has somewhat of a speaking role on it, she is working on a magic spell or studying and harder than ever. Like in Spike oh, yeah, Service, she has to read twelve books in a weekend. In in Phil, in Too Many Pinkie Pies, she's trying new magic spells. In Wonderbolts Academy. Applejack mentions how Twilight is trying new stuff. In Magic Duel, she's trying new spells, and she's putting those spells into uh, into effect to fight Trixie. Then she gets defeated. Then she gets lectured by Sekora. Then she fights back. In uh, in every and then when she goes to the Crystal Empire in uh, games fun is play, she's also being lectured how to become uh, how to be like. Uh, calm under pressure by Princess Cadence. It's all about subtlety There's and how they build her to, to her turning into a princess. Yeah, but, but you see, is that they don't say it. They show it. It's actually it. no. It's a very good way to. T- it's a very good method of storytelling because they are showing us. They are not telling us. They no, are I like, not I like feeding that. us I, what it's already obvious. So I, yeah, I, I mean, you are not. You don't. You don't need to have the book addressed. Oh, hold on. Let me let me say this, and then you can no, talk. No. But you don't need to have the book addressed when you don't really need. You don't really need to. You, everybody was looking at the book because it was being held by Luna. And mm-hmm. you know that every time that Luna appears on the screen, she's going to be the focus because the fans love her. Mm-hmm. So it is why, it, it, it's why I said, you know what? We don't need to, to talk about the book. We know that book means really important stuff. Uh-huh. We know it's, it, uh, the cover has stars and swirls. We know it's the book from Stars Will the Bearded. We can put two and two together. We are not dumb. We are smart. And I, I'm pretty sure that the guys who run the show know that. That's why they didn't spoon-fed us, spoon-fed that to us. 
I don't know. I agree and disagree at the same time. Like I, I agree okay. that the el- that the uh, elements of like Twilight's, uh, you know, things are there, but I don't necessarily think that it was hidden in a specific direction. And I feel that more plot elements could have could have been introduced to steer down the path of you know more more suggesting towards the idea that yes she is going to become a princess because yeah okay she's studying you know a lot of stuff she's practicing new things that could be anything it could be personal growth it could be a simple story of overcoming limits it could be that she has to join a competition at the end of the series you know there there is nothing specifically tying it to her being introduced as a princess. And while we can't sort of piece it together, you know, I, I personally, at least, I felt that maybe on the plot, on, on the level of plot, it could have had little tiny little drops here and there to suggest more that they were going in that direction. Like signposts, you know, a, a little bit. Because if they could introduce all these elements and show all these things, uh, like... On the assumption, right, on the assumption that it was not a coincidence of the individual writers to just, you know, choose what would Twilight be doing and just pick something studious, right? Let's assume that well, it was written. Well, you know uh, that the indivi- why couldn't they, 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 you, you talk about individual writers. It's like mm-hmm. something more like, you, you know that when they work together, they don't work separate. Megan McCarthy gets them all together in a room and yeah, they yeah, know, work together to make it work. Like, uh, and not only that, but they also bring in Jason Thiessen. Like, in between Megan and Jason, who are now executive producers of the series, they know about Friendship is Magic from the, from, from the, uh, from, from, they know the entire thing from start to finish. They know all the continuity. They are the ones who keep uh, keep track of the universe and to make it make to have it make sense. Yeah, if exactly. I'm expressing myself yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah you here's are another exactly. thing. Exactly so. here's, here's another thing that you all seem to forget. During back then, during the season three rush, there were some indication of Princess Twilight popping up in certain locations. There was that British toy fair or something like that there was oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. yeah there were there were derps here and there that showed um, twilight as an alicorn and people were all freaked out to the prospect of twilight becoming an alicorn like what's this what is this what does this mean and the signs were there if you think about it the british toy thing with the well, whole those, are ex- those are external signs i know but external. the thing yeah, is that's the merchandise is not intrinsically not, linked to the show that's right. true but the thing is it's the, the signs are there for what <coughs> hasbro wants like mm. in the toy plush the spaghetti main toy plush there were a picture of twilight in the background with horns and wings and in the sticker book there's a twilight alicorn in the book too i mean it's all signs that with what Hasbro Marketing wants with Twilight. And you know what? It came true. Am I yeah, the okay, only one who but... thinks on signs from the future and <laughs> apocalyptic signs that... Because every time you say, there is signs of this, there is signs of that. And like, he's like Nostradamus talking about the apocalypse. It's like, it's upon us. I have the corn, okay. it's not upon us. On the, on the okay, third okay. day, so you... Twilight okay. rise with extra okay. appendages. Do you get the base... You get the baseball bats. I'll get the water. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'm the water. Yeah, I agree, I agree like... with Norman with what he said about the these things popping up. Like, and if you realize the the two two weeks before the season three finale was premiered, Hasbro was already announcing it, and the Hub were already announcing it on their Facebook page, and they were showing pictures of Twilight getting a coronation and turning into an alicorn, and there were so many theories about, oh, she's going to turn into an alicorn for a moment, and then she's going to stop being an alicorn, right? She's not going to stay an alicorn forever. I mean, they cannot put this change. There is something wrong with the house. Ah! <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, sorry. Just let me let me just ask one question. Then don't don't you feel in that case, right, that they sort of pushed it off the cliff a little bit? Wouldn't it have been better to have actually, you know, you know, made it 
smoother okay. so that people could jump into okay. it. Like, okay. If you no, said no, no, they're you know what? in a room, this is, right? the, this is what they did. No, no, no. This is what they did. Okay. Imagine this. Imagine that someone comes to your to your house and they put hot wax on your leg and then they're going to peel the the, 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 the hairs on your leg. Okay. <laughs> now they can do it slowly. No, or they no, can no, do no. It that, is, that is no, 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 no. Shut up. Let me finish. Exact. Let me finish. Now, if they do it quickly, it's going to last longer, but it may hurt a bit less, but then you're going to still be upset because you still <laughs> lost all your hairs on your leg. There's going to be a what change you, after all. You so, you know what? I'd rather, I'd rather have them do it quickly the way they did it, rather than building it up and going slowly, because in the end, people are going to get the same reaction. Oh, They're boys. going to get angry. Okay. They're going to get yeah, pissed people, off. People were going to get angry in the first place, so you might as well, you know, let Kitsune, it... Um, what James said was strange enough, but the thing is, what Hasbro marketing did during the whole princess coronation thing was to build up like the whole um, princess wedding, the real British princess wedding thingy, to make yeah, it look. It was it was themed at the time because we had the right, we had the royal wedding. It was appropriate. Everyone was kind of on the British wedding, so of course we would sort of connect it together. We just yeah, we're more about the merchandise here than the actual show. That, that's how the, the, the actual that. show. Is. I want to build yeah, up. That's the thing. I just want a glorious build up. I don't like having stuff, you know, shoved in at the last minute. You know, all these deus exes and and uh, and, uh, and well, all these kind of things. It, it, it's not. I don't no, know. It's not surprised. good I'm storytelling. Amazed. Well, I am, no. Think... You know what? I'm amazed that it's been a year, almost literally a year, since this change has been made, and there's people who are still upset, and there's still the Ooh. in denial. That this Who's happened. Who's still upset? Who's still upset that it no, that's Yeah, like, you can see this is talking about, you know, just the, the pacing of the build-up. It's, not, uh, it's nothing to do about the end result. The end result was still no, good. I'm, yeah, we're all okay yeah, with that, right? Let's, so, let's well, we're all fine. We're all okay. I, know, I don't know anyone, even people I knew who were originally upset about Twilight being an alicorn, they don't mind it now because mm-hmm. they're used to it. It's all working out fine, and she's still the same... Pony, that's the thing. She's still the same personality. It's just an advancement. It's an evolution. She doesn't I do have, anything. I have, have one something. guy who emails me once a month. Oh, God. Once a month for an entire okay. year telling me, I don't like Twilight change. I'm going to leave the fandom. And then I am like, okay, click. And then I go to these, uh, I check these posts on Equestria Daily, and sometimes out of curiosity, I check the comments. And two See, out of... Five comments. There's people getting angry at this. So I and and I don't I just I don't read the entire thread, of course. But I just yeah. arch my eyebrows. I raise my eyebrows, and I'm like, huh, are we yeah, really so still doing well, this? And so, I, of course, fair. I stay away from it because I am too yeah, busy like, working on commissions, should, doing articles, should, and all yeah. that. So it's like, I, I, but I'm still amazed that there's people who are still upset about this change. Which, to be honest with uh-huh. you. With the limitations they had and the the, 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 constra- the time constraint and the pressure and from all sides, they did an incredible job. It's really and more just a slow, it's dwindling but arrogant minority that's uh, angry still about this because it's honestly not affected the show at all. Every fandom has this. Every fandom has. Yeah, there is true. a fan. There is the side of the fandom who doesn't like the new Doctor Who. There is the side of the fandom who doesn't like the green eyes on Sonic the Hedgehog. And there is the side of the fandom that doesn't like can the wings not, on Can Pirates we not Sparkle. bring up? Oh man! You know, please, I'm never please. gonna get. Through, I'm can never we, gonna get we, through one can single we that out? conversation <laughs> with you without you bringing up Sonic the. F- That's not a word. Yeah, Chong. <laughs> oh my God, Kitsune, you don't like Sonic either. Not, not very much, no. You know what? We break, may have found something. Away from to this. Get, we may, you know what? We may have found the nexus to make us friends with each other forever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next news. Mom finds out her five-year-old son is a brony. Sarah Fader is a mother of two: Ari, her five-year-old son, and Samara, her two-year-old daughter. She is also a blogger for Old School, New School. In her recent post, she discovered that her five-year-old son, Ari, is a brony. Sarah and her son had similar interests, from playing chess to playing 20 questions. And apparently, My Little Pony is one of them too. To find out more about this heartwarming story, links can be found in the show notes. And who here have read this article? I've read it, so, I mean, I was reading it while uh, the previous discussion was going on. Ah. And Hmm. I really like this article. 
Firstly, it's always adorable when one of the good things that has come out of the new My Little Pony is that you have people of who appreciated it, like watch the older show when they were little. They now can enjoy it with their kids too. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you know, I have you know my my sister has a niece, and my niece isn't a brony per se. Like she watches the show now and again, just a couple of the toys, but it's not like her big thing. But, you know, my sister was big into My Little Pony when she was young. And I was, you know, I, I was quite a little into it when I was with her as well. And, you know, we, when me and my sister were little, we played with the toy now and again because I was like two or something. So, you know, it's, there's no you know, sense of gender identity or anything to concern about because you're like two. And my sister still likes My Little Pony. She doesn't watch the show, but whenever the show's on, they watch it. And it's really nice to see a mother and son, like, really connect together just because the show is nice. But I do agree with her on the weird the conflict about the term brony. Like, why should there be a specific term for a, a one side of the demographic of a show? Like, why does it have to be such an issue to be a male fan of this show? And, you know, like, it's 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 still kind of harkening back to a stigma that guys can't enjoy shows about little ponies wandering around being magical because it's just a cartoon. There is a targeted demographic, but that doesn't mean it should only be for that demographic. And she sort of contests that maybe, like, on the one hand, it's nice that it's acknowledged, but on the other hand, it's kind of weird because it's still harkening to it as stigma that these are a unique group of individuals, of male individuals, who watch this show, when it should just be, these are people who like this show. The thing is, um, Final Gamer, um, once something is popular, people like to give them a label. For example, yeah. the Star Trek fandom, once they're popular, they're called Trekkies. I understand, the, uh, it's, the, it's not the label, it's the fact that Brony adheres to the male contingent. Like oh, yes. most when in, in the social media and all that, Brony only seems to apply to male viewers of the show. They don't really bother with the females. We tried with Pegasus sister, but that just didn't work. I know there's females out there who call themselves Bronies and that. But when people talk about Bronies, they're usually talking about male fans. So I really liked her. I, I really liked Mrs. Spader's article about just enjoying a show just because you like it. Because every pony learns something. And that's nice. I agree, I agree with that. I want to take a very different view on the article. And mm-hmm. I'm going to actually say things that people are probably going to get upset with me about. But but hear me out, hear me out. All right. Okay. I'm, I read the article, all right? And I'm going to say I don't like the article. Oh. All right. Uh-huh. And the reason why I don't like the article is for the exact same reason that you brought up the point that the term brony segments people. The article segments people. In order to write an article about the specialness of a boy liking My Little Pony, you're acknowledging that there is something wrong with a boy liking My Little Pony. Now, I'm going to put it into perspective. If this if this article was about a man who liked SpongeBob SquarePants, my brother is a 27-year-old and he likes the show SpongeBob SquarePants. Right? No one would give a That's not a word about the article because it's perfectly accepted nowadays that yeah. many adults and you know, SpongeBob is a pretty contemporary uh, cartoon, yeah, it's, right? It's very, it's very Looney Tunes. It's very, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's typical slapstick it. cartoon. There's nothing, there's nothing unusual about it. It's just a stupid cartoon. Yeah. So, so it, the idea for me is that if you wrote or read an article that says my 27 year old brother likes SpongeBob SquarePants, you'd be thinking, okay, this is a bit weird. Why would you even bother to write? Yeah. This? Why is this? Yeah, we're, we're trying to get to the point where we say these kind of things about these kind of articles. Like, okay, your son is a brony, so what? Yeah. You know? It sounds negative, but the point is, we don't... There, there is still this negative stigma going around that is like, oh, yeah. you know, men can't enjoy My Little Pony. That's why we have to write these articles to convince yeah. the world I, that it's... No, okay. no, I, 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 I see a point, Gassini. You know, it's like, it's the fact that the fact that you are bringing up this issue and the fact that you are exemplifying it 
as yeah. the point of an article, you are still acknowledging, even if you're trying to contest against it, you are still acknowledging this subconscious negative stigma yeah, exactly. of people exactly. who enjoy, of men who enjoy the show. And, like, and, and of course, the irony <clears throat> is that she points that exact thing out in the article itself. Uh, so, and you know, tries to fight against it with, like, I just like them. Yeah, if people just like them, let them like them. Let's not need to write. And then, uh, you know, going through all the, uh, co- sorry, going through all the comments about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody's like, yeah, you know, I support you. Um, okay, I agree about something. I like uh, puff pieces. Uh, no offense to the uh, author of the blog, but this is a puff piece, all right? It's about yeah. mothers and children connecting over something nice. Yeah. It could be a meal. It could be lasagna. You know, it could be uh, yeah. a walk in the park. <clears throat> in this case, this one is just about a cartoon, which is fine. I like that, all right? Yeah. Puff pieces make you feel good. It's nice. That's the, that's the good thing about it. But the fact is that even in this puff piece, it still goes on to drag out the whole thing about, you know, like, uh, you know, it's the men who like it and all the stuff about yeah. that. So you still, it still slides into that a little bit. By, by, addressing, the should be about. by addressing the issue, you are still reinforcing the stereotype. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. It's like, Cause, because here's the thing, when you're five years old or something, there is no sense of gender identity and there's no reason to because little kids and toddlers, they don't have the sense of boys like robots, girls like princesses. It's all, you all play with the same toys because toys are just toys. You don't have the sense of, I can turn this around and make this up and create this, build this into something. No, you just move them around on the ground and <laughs> make little tiny adventures. <laughs> It's a very sweet article. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's only further exemplifying the stereotype of the whole issue that media has with it. But I'm sure that wasn't her point. True. I'm sure that wasn't her point. Speaking of speaking of the media having an issue with the term brownie, (laughs) there is this article that has popped up recently on the AmericanConservative.com about title The Rise of the Brownies. And yeah, it's this. Kind of, you know, it's, it, it is this kind of website that is kind of like conservative, right wing, that usually follows on the trail of Fox News, and they are talking about this outrageous thing that is the brownie phenomenon. Yeah, well, they're like a couple of uh, a couple of years too late, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but, you know, the funny jumped thing on is... this train like uh, when it left the station, and they're sort of like been chasing it for the past three years, and only managed to catch up to the end. At yeah, this but you point. know what? You know what's the funny part of this all is that the article is not really negative in nature. It's fairly positive. Um, okay, it's it's as positive and clumsy as you can get because, like right right here, like on the third or fourth paragraph of the of the article, they say they they started with this. Let's get this out of the way first. Brownies are not gay. And then they start talking about gays, lesbians. I see. Yeah, I, I remember like, that. Yeah, and that, that, is that seemed very weird. weird. That so, is a backhanded compliment right there. That is not <laughs> really. You know, that yes. is no, no. But okay, no. You see, this is this is just the first part. That then it gets better talking about yeah, no, hey, they are nice people. They're weird, but hey, in their weirdness, they are doing good things. They bring up a couple of examples. They talk about Lauren Faust. They talk about uh, the the uh, 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 the Brownie Thank You Fund and all the charities that we have done and all of that. So, yeah, the, the, the article is definitely positive in nature, but it's full of those clumsy statements that we are, a, we are a conservative media. We don't know how to handle things. We know a lot of gay friends. We have a lot of black friends. And it's like the, in trying to yeah. make something politically correct, I, I they kind of it's... fail at it. Okay, it's not so harmful as uh, the way you see it is more adorable of these yeah. guys going okay we know we like you please don't don't hate us <laughs> it's kind of funny no, I, I, don't know, I, like... I think i'm like reading between the lines there's something pretty poisonous in there and uh, you know you mentioned it already but it's that one um paragraph which talks about the gays and for context i'm going to read it out for our listeners all right so the it. the uh the paragraph is that i'm going to use my uh, conservative voice <clears throat> Let's get this out of the way first. Bronies are not gay. 
One might be hard-pressed, sure, when seeing college-age guys wearing pink wigs and furry faux tails walking into a convention center, as this writer saw outside what turned out to be BronyCon 2013 in Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore. I actually said Baltimore. Baltimore. <gasps> An event that drew over 12,000 people not to look for some LGBT connection. But the vast majority of them are indeed heterosexual, according to scientific studies of the fandom. Okay, you see, there's so many things weird with that that yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, this but you see, that's the... That, okay, okay, okay. How many times... How much time did you spend on conservative websites or right-wing websites? Barely. I, I spent a lot of time on conservative parody websites, so <laughs> I know okay. a little now, bit okay, of... Okay, okay, like, okay. Direct. Straightforward yes. series like, like, like straight face conservative yeah, websites. How yeah. much time did you spend on them? Okay, I well, don't. Not being, I personally, not being American I and not wanting to be American, I kind of stay away from everything conservative. Okay, because but conservative personally, scary. I don't because I, it's not my thing. I don't care about no. politics. But I have quite a couple of conservative and right wing friends who are also brownies, and being friends with them implies that I indirectly spend time on those websites because they read me their uh, they read me articles or they talk to me about this stuff. So unintentionally, I get dragged into it. I can tell you. This is the usual way they word it. They are very snarky. They are very uh, cynical about things. And they make a lot of offhand comments that, to be honest with you, compared to what Howard Stern or Tosh.0 said about us on the past, not only talking about the Rule 34 and the Cloppers, but also showing it on public television, I think this is the most, the most harmless and probably positive article we have had on a right wing website in a long time. And this is the funny thing. Always around this time of the year, every year since 2011, we have had articles popping up on websites everywhere talking about how positive we are and about how good we are. And oh my God, the brownies are perfect. And then when the convention season starts on the summer, we have the total opposite with people saying that we are just a bunch of perverts. One compensates yeah, well, for the people, other. You see, that's what happens. I, I don't know. You see, see talking, about, <laughs> talking about Tosh.0, right? Talking about Tosh.0 and, and Howard Stern, at least they're honest in a very weird way. I'm going to say not being at honest. least. They are being, no, they're not. They, they're not they being are honest. sensationalists. They are, to, they are, sensationalists. They are being scandalous. But, they are trying to. Yeah, they're trying to. Yeah, that's yellow press. But, but if, it, if it didn't yeah. happen, there's nothing for them to talk about. At least it happened. They are trying once. to. Gra- they are this article, for straws right? This, because uh, they to get popularity, and the best way they no, can do it is by talking about the not. worst traits of the fandom. Well, that's what they do. That's what that's what Howard Stern is about. That's what Tosh. Yes, I know. Oh, I know. Does. I know. And you know uh, what? It's fun funny. I actually, I, I can, I actually get Howard Stern because the guy is a massive nerd about Spider-Man and Marvel comics. The guy knows everything that there is to know about X-Men and Fantastic Four, etc. So when he messes us with us and he like calls us perverts or like cloppers or whatever, they uh, he is kind of like indirectly mocking himself because yeah, he he, uh, does I'm not sure he does get that. I'm not There's saying he's a brony. I'm right? saying he is a nerd. Like us, I mean, I'd rather have a nerd what, messing what with us than is. having a, a, a straight, a, 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 a straight-faced, suit-wearing douchebag working on Fox News. <laughs> you see, the th- the thing, the thing for me, right, is about the message of this article. Like, if if uh, if Tosh Boyno makes fun of the fandom, okay, I get it. It's for entertainment. You're having a laugh at the dark side. If Stern makes fun of it. It's about the same thing, you know. It's something for him to talk about. It's an interest topic for his show, right? This article, which I read, and everybody should read because it's it's kind of boggling. What is the message? Is it, like what I'm getting from it is like, okay, these guys are pretty okay dudes, but at least they're not gay. You know what is is yeah. that what they're trying to say? Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to went out it, of nowhere. It kind I, of I like usually... sneak that that one in, right? And, and not only that one, but they're uh, later on further down. They keep bringing up the the homosexual thing like two or three times, and then they sort of like treat the fandom as uh, yeah. Here it is: fandoms are a laboratory. All right, that's uh, a quote from a quote in the article. 
you know, they're, they're talking about us, but what is the point of the article? What, what would you say the point of the article is? The point of the article is that there is no news that day, so they have to fill it up with something. <laughs> okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to accept that. Saying, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna accept that. You know what? Thankfully, it wasn't so harmful as it is. Guys, we have seen wars. We have been yeah, called war this is, oh, this is just an oh, This is just an article expressing old news or something we already know, and it's just pointing it out to all the other 40 to 50-year-old conservatives who have still not found out about this or have somehow managed to avoid it or just hear the word popping up everywhere and just think it's one of those newfangled things that kids are into nowadays. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, yeah, exactly. it's, it's a harmless article. I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm kind of half and half on what Katsunia was saying about whether or not there's some kind of be- between the lines implication mm-hmm. of it. But quite frankly, it's not really an issue for us because it's an article that doesn't really affect us. The thing I noticed about this article is it's trying to catch up on three years of brony fandom with how it is. Like, you, you said the, the conservative never really paid any attention to this and even if they did it was a backhanded thing or talking bad about us now they want to well for a getting more page views and b trying to catch up on three years of brony fandom news and you know what bring them as conservatives and stuff they need to jab at us if any way possible i actually think they're jabbing at the gays more than us yeah, they're, but they're actually saying like gays are worse than us because you know. Oh God. Yeah, no, it's just the truth. It, no, it's no, what but, they're but saying. Still, you know, but saying, still, like, these like, guys are weird. At least Tsune, they're not gay. Tsune, yeah. Tsune, you are reading way too deep on that. Yeah. I don't think no. they're not saying anything. They are, they, I don't think they it, are yeah, just I don't saying think not to confuse that. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, know, they're just saying don't don't mix both both concepts. It's very easy to confuse them. Look, it's the same thing when people say, "Okay, let's compare." Uh, I don't. Let's compare a guy who likes poetry <laughs> with a guy who likes prose, and they're like, "Oh, they're the same thing." No, they're not. Kitsune, you're just going out of the way to to to. You know what? You're doing something that I don't like. You're going out of your way to try and compa- uh, and make a comparison and an, anal- an analogy, and in doing so, you're hurting what the article is really it really is about. Yeah, what is it? What is it about? That's the, that was my question because I can't actually figure it out. Well, the article Remember? is about the brownies and it's about showing it to a conservative audience that only checks that website. For everyone else who already has, that's all news. It's all news to us because we are brownies. It's all news to the people who, who watch Fox News because Fox News reported it in 2011. It's all news for the people who read the guard. Uh, I don't know what is a, a, a British newspaper, FG. The Sun? <coughs> yeah, uh, well, right wing. Well, British well, depends. Well, hold on. You, you can't store any newspaper out there. I mean, you got Okay, right wing. Right wing. Oh, no. oh, okay. Um, your Daily Mail. <coughs> okay, it's like, I'm pretty sure the Daily Mail did have an article as well. I, 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 I think I remember Equestria Daily reporting on it and saying that it was actually somewhat neutral. So I am like, I'm thinking, what are you trying to say with your long and drawn out, drawn out analogy? What Kitsune is doing is he's overthinking it. And the point of the article is, like I said before, is to catch up on three years of brony things. Like you said, the Fox News reported on us early 2011 and it was not a positive review or uh, news. And now with what we've done and what we established, they want a piece of the pie, of the media pie. And you know what? I can't blame them. It is Uh definitely popular. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, I actually was looking up um, while you were talking. I did look up and saw that the Daily Mail had done um, several articles about My Little Pony, weirdly focusing on the military aspect of it, the the military fans, and saying that it was a very unusual phenomenon in the young male generation, but nothing more. Mm, Okay, understandable. You know, I mean, there's a picture of Applejack on top of an M60 machine gun, and I like that. (laughs) So, yeah, so, you know, I think as clunky as the language is in the American conservative, it's just their way, and I don't think there's anything harmful in it towards it. It's just, I think it's just what James was saying. It's the whole, some of my best friends are gay. I don't have a problem with them. It's, <laughs> you know, it's that, it's that kind of attitude where they yeah. don't want to be offensive, they want to look reasonable, good people, and they probably are. It's just... You know, 
the 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 awkward in their own way. But it's harmless. Mm. All right. They, they could they could have definitely picked a better picture. Yes. The yeah, 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 the picture is terrible. Case, because that, that is not a flattering picture. I know, that even if it's just it's so. But yes. guys, guys, here's the thing. Do you know how hard is it to make a fursuit? It is not easy. No. Don't, but why why even use a picture of of a fursuit? I've seen it, I've seen a yeah, lot of regular did fursuit. didn't make the fursuit. <laughs> they took the picture. <laughs> they, they, com- they, they commissioned it. They said we want a pinkie pie and we want it to look a bit like a pig with a mohawk. Alright? <laughs> we, 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 we don't we, we want Pinkie Pie cosplayed as Orson from Garfield. No, no. It, to be honest, this is actually Pinkie Pie dressed as a pig in that one episode. Remember? Oh uh, yes. <laughs> she kind, yeah. she kind of looks like Ham from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was news time for this week. And moving on to the next topic is shout outs. Anyway, my shout out goes to James. Kitsune and you, Final Gamer. Thanks for being on the show and making this show really entertaining and an interesting edit for SweetieBot. <laughs> SweetieBot is going to blow her brains out. Yep. There's going to be at least five minutes just oh, worth of... <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> I know. She's going to have fun. I'm sorry, SweetieBot. But anyway, James, what about you? Shoutouts. Shoutouts. Well, first shoutout goes to this crazy... <laughs> Who's in the chat right now? Who's uh, Kitsune? This guy, the, really? Wow. Oh my god! I wow. wish I could. I wish I could make a good Christopher Walken impression because he is un. That's not a word. Believable. Um, <laughs> do you want to shout out at me or just shout at me? Because <laughs> I am. That's I'm what shout we do. Out at, you know what? I am passively aggressively shout out at you. Okay, so <laughs> shut up. Uh, I'm <laughs> shut up and right take now. my shout out. <laughs> and I also want to give a shout out to my friend FG for uh, just braving and taking here on this craziness that is this podcast. And uh, I hope you had a good time, man. It's been pretty fun. I don't think I'll come back here again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Aww. What if we offer no, you? It's been cookies? fun. No, no, seriously. Well, I had, I had no, fun. Well, what's, it's, it's, what's so it's, hostile it's, about this environment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing. It's just it's just flowers and sunshine for an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. That's not a word. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's that's not a word. Love you. <laughs> right. Oh, you sound like me in New oh, Year. God. Anyway, so yeah, no, I had a, a great time here. But also, Norman, I guess you wanted me to do my shout outs or something. Or James has another one left. Yeah, James, do any more? Personally, I am completely and utterly done with this world. I'm going to jump at the... No. I don't have any other <laughs> shout-outs right. to give. That's Not that's even, not even for Rarity. Function. She's just shout-out to Rarity. She's listening. She doesn't need a shout-out because she shines <laughs> like diamonds. You <laughs> mother... Okay, anyway. You don't, you don't even care about her enough. What, what an ass. What an ass. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? Norman, Norman, ask me what my shout-out is. Okay. Ask me what my shout-out is. So what about your shout-out, Kitsune? <laughs> I'm, I'm giving a shout out to <laughs> Tris. <laughs> right, because, <laughs> because she's the best pony and she deserves it. Not like that rarity, right? In the corner fiddling I with her dresses and swing her cat to like a <laughs> Oh, God. I'm going to <laughs> okay, I'm going to shout out everyone here. Okay, I'm going to shout out to Norman, of course, for hosting the show, gracious as ever. Um, <coughs> useless as ever. <coughs> um, shouting out to James, who always makes these shows a little bit more interesting <laughs> and stressful. And uh, FG, man, it's uh, nice to... Shut up, James. I'm talking to FG, all right? FG, I'm talking to you. It's been yeah. fun. It's been great. I hope you come back because it's been pretty cool. Yeah, I like your people, style. If people want me to come back, then I'll come back if you need, like, a fourth wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we always need a fork wheel here <laughs> on the show. How awesome. <laughs> and, and I want to shout out to, uh, well, recently, if people, some people know, but I'm going to say, like, recently I uh, took a day trip to Norman's oh, country of, uh, of uh, residence and birth, the lovely country of Malaysia. Shout out to Malaysia. You guys are the best, best country <laughs> in the world. Four hours in a... F- Word? Bus, like dying, was the best experience of my life. Okay. Getting my shoes stolen by a street urchin was the best experience of my life. Okay. That's not a word. 
your country. Shout out. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I have nothing to respond to that. Wow. Anyway, um, final, what about you? Oh, um, well, I shout out to everybody here as well, like Norman, for managing to tolerate all of us in the same room. Oh, um, Kasuni for bringing up healthy debates between everyone. James for dragging me in and also bringing up healthy debates among everyone. And I don't owe you anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm glad you don't. And, <laughs> and yeah, I, actually, I, I had fun. It, it's nice because I'm the kind of person who's very, very passive about MOP and sort of hanging in the background. Like, everyone's at the tables so all just talking to each other and sort of making great debates about who's best pony or where the show's going to go. I'm just sitting at the back drinking going, so uh, when's the next episode? <laughs> okay, next week. Bye then. i just leave and go out, for, go out for a drink and then come back. And then I'll watch it and then I'll leave again. That's kind of it. But it's nice to dip my head now and again into the... What's, what's, what's a nice word for a chaos? <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> uh, for the... Um, that's not a word. <laughs> oh God! No, 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 no. Seriously, it's um, not a single the... thing that can be swear. Oh my God! No, no. For the wonderful mess of love and friendship that this fandom is, that now and again you can pop in, see what's going on, see people being cool, and then popping out. Actually, I'm really glad. It's maybe it's just me and not listening to very much bony news, but it seems. Things have calmed down more in season four than the last seasons have been. Like, we're kind of on a weird level of balance, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just me and wishful thinking. But anyway, it's just been fun. Oh, it's true, it's true. I've seen uh, the chaos gone down a bit with the season four started. And, you know, people are not blaming Emily Larson that much anymore. (laughs) No. (laughs) Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach us. Well, everything's in the show notes. And if you would like to reach us on Twitter, you can reach SweetieBot at the MBS show. She will tweet about stuff related to the show, edits, and random stuff. And if you'd like to reach me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I will tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And James? You can find me on, uh, on Twitter uh, at James Cork. And you can find me on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. And you can visit my pony Tumblr at movieslate, askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Kitsune, where can they find you? Find me in the one place you can always find me, baby. Filmfiction.net slash user slash Kitsune Risu. Or if you want, just come by my house for a drink. And uh, you'll never leave. <laughs> oh my. And Final Gamer, what about you? Where can they find you? Uh, you can tweet me at uh, Final Gamer James on uh, Twitter. Um, I'm also available on YouTube under the same name if anyone wants to watch horrible videos of me trying to play video games drunk every twice a year. Oh, God. Well, I'll be sure to put that in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been your host, Norman Sanzo. And I have been... Wait, who am I? Oh, my God, who am I? I have been James Cork. <laughs> This is Kitsune Risu. And this is Final Gamer, or it's just FG if you prefer not to get confused. And next week will be less chaotic. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Okay, kids, 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 kids. Here's the thing. Uh, what James did was a really strange analogy, but I get it. If you're yeah. gonna kill Rarity, right? Oh, Funny that right. you ask that because I did kill Rarity in a story <laughs> a long time ago, and this is low. Oh, don't bring that up again. So I'm never getting away from that. <laughs> okay. Hush. <laughs> Don't be uh, funny to... when we're going to edit this out. We ruined yeah. it. Yeah. No, the, the thing is, I wanted. To Sorry, make guys. Sure he... I was having a phone call here. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. hold on. Okay. F- so F- I. F- okay, F- okay. F- hold on a minute. I had a. I, uh, sh- guys, there is a good segue to move mm-hmm. from one to the other because you said, "What is the problem that the media has with the word mm-hmm. brony?" And then I started with. Well, if you want to talk about the media having an issue with the word brony, there is this article on Fox News, blah, 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 blah. It's not Fox okay. News. It's just an example. It's, we could totally segue uh, from one to okay. the other that way. I, it can, I it actually, can work. I actually jumped on your segue. I was about to pull it in with James, and then Norman had to come no, I need to... <laughs> yes, <laughs> Norman, you're ruining everything. <laughs> you're no, ruining need... ruined... James, James, no, let's shut, kick Norman out. We should run, let's run this show from now on. No. Just like have two hours of insulting. <laughs> Everybody you know would love this show. Norman right, right. In the back. We're going to leave Norman in the background. He's going yes. to record it only. And it's going to be a free <laughs> man show. You, so he's, he's turned into Barry from Game Grumps. Oh, God. Yes. High five, go. everyone. <laughs> you want to count down first? That will be making my job easier. Well, I... Wait, what? Countdown. Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when Kitsune comes back. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing I want, because it'll make my job easier and I know when to cut and stuff. Yeah, I know. It's like the... I know I know how you plan it. It's like in movies, when you do the the, the, the clapper and scene. Uh-huh. You know why they use a clapper, right? So they can find out what's the time of the edit cut for the it's, editor. It's not only that. I mean, the clapper is both a visual help to know the scene... The, the 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 sequence like how many the number of take uh director cinematographer but also the sound of the clapper the the, the that it makes that it's you that is used to synchronize the audio when they are editing the sound of mm. the movie i actually know people who do that with audacity using the clap of their hands <clears throat> so the same yes purpose. exactly Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same thing. That's why the claps, are, the clapper is still used as a. It's a very like the clapper has been, it has been evolving, and now they use digital clappers that have like digital numbers on them, and they're very neat. I want to have one of them, but the 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 the, the, the method is exactly the same. You do the clack, and then it goes. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's good. That's sorry, good. I'm back. Am I interrupting? No, no. We're just talking about clappers. <laughs> you're All not. Right. You're not. Yeah, clap. No, clap. not not when you're saying anything. Am I ever interrupting? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I tell, I tell you, I tell you, you know, Norman. The thing is, like, you want you want like spice up your show. You should keep more of my and James's arguments in. You cut no, out. I think that's the worst. Man. No, that's yeah, no, I agree do with it. FG. Come on, Norman. Yeah. Just don't edit do any of this. Oh, yeah, just God, so that. Don't no, edit no. any of it. Don't cut anything out. This is, like the, best, this is the best stuff. You know, yeah, so don't you guys, this guy's watch like Korean We don't, we don't know uncut variety. in the movie industry basically means it's 20 minutes longer and slightly... That's not a word. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>